another edition of Totally Awesome Fishing and we're here in the Totally Awesome Workshop. Today's episode, I'm going to show you how to rig these puppies up. Full size marlin lures. Now, if you're a bill fisherman of any repute, you will know that artificial lures can be very good. Now, I've done a lot of marlin fishing, way too much marlin fishing for my own good really. I spent years in my late 20s and early 30s. I just got completely stuck with blue marlin fishing caught a lot of fish, put a lot of time in, quite a few blanks, but on lures, I was pretty good at it. Now I'm gonna run through some lures, some ways to rig them, how to pull them, all little tips that you need to know and help put that marlin, because let's face it, all fishing's getting harder and harder and you need and I need all the help you can get. Let me pass on a few tips and I'll show you a little bit about my marlin lure collection. Now it's pretty much my opinion that these marlin lures, as with all fishing lures, catch just as many fishermen as they do fish. But there are a few tips here. I can show you how to rig them, different types, what they do. Let's get cracking and show you how to rig that marlin lure up and get a big old billfish. Now marlin lures come in a wide variety of shapes and sizes and textures and materials. Some work, some don't, some you know, a very, very good, no question about it. Now, basically, marlin fishing is consisting of with artificial lures, pulling one of these chaps along behind the boat from any speeds, let's say six knots, up to ones like this, which are called, called doorknob lures. They've got a low enough flow waste here, uh, so the water rushes over and centralizes it and puts a, I think, I think like a little pressure area there, keeps it running dead straight, even in fast um, trolling speeds. You can, you can fish them at a variety of speeds. The main thing you've got to remember is don't put, let's say, this high-speed uh, doorknob lure uh, and fish it slow. On retrospect and the other way around, don't get a very steep face marlin lure that obviously you know, kicks up a bit, of, uh, a bit of fuss in the water and bubbles. Don't think you're going to drag that fast. It's just going to skip and bounce and go all over the place. The fish won't take it. So now these doorknob lures, I'm going to start with the fast end of the scale first. These doorknob lures... They got all sort of curved in waist there, and that I think it sort of equalizes pressure or something like that. Either side, it keeps them running really straight at speeds of say 15 plus knots. I mean, I've even pulled them up to about 20 knots, and providing you run them a long way back, they still seem to run fast. Now, if you're trolling fast, you're covering more ground, so therefore, I feel you've got a much better chance of hooking up. Second point if this is whistling along at about 12 to 15 knots with a pair of these hooks on the back, then Anything that shuts its mouth on that hook is pretty well going to be hooked. Now, let me show you the basics of the leading material and the hooking on these doorknobs. Now, this particular one is a hard epoxy head one, but you've got Molecraft who manufacture soft bendy ones, and they might be, the theory is, they just soft, so a marlin might just bite on that a split second longer and get the hooks into them. Let's check it out. Now, here's the basics of it, okay? There's your marlin lure. You have generally a darker colour for the back on this plastic skirting and a lighter colour underneath. You have, as I say, we've got here 400 pound Andy monofilament. That's your leader because the marlin have no teeth, therefore uh, they only chafe on it. Anything lighter if you're fishing blue marlin on their marlin bills, it's very, very rough. It's like sort of, well, I suppose worse than sandpaper. It's like a sort of surf form tool and they can chafe away at this, okay? Try and stick to 400 pounds if you're fishing for blue or black marlin. Now, if you're specialising in striped marlin and selfish, you can drop this to 200 pounds. But huge risk if you're fishing in the same area as frequented by blue marlin. Because trust me, the blue marlin are eating this, not the leader. They're not really bothered whether you put that on five pound or 500 pounds. They're going to bite this. So my, my real experience tells me, fish with a heavy leader, you know, and don't worry about it, it's not really going to affect the action of the lure. Okay, so you've got the mono layer. Now in between it, nearly all marlin fishermen, as you can see, that hides in the skirt, the hooks hide in the skirt like that. When the fish grabs it, they should hook up. But there's a variety of different rigs at the end here that different people use. This one came ready rigged, and always, if you can, put a piece of wire between these two because Wahoo and Barracuda 
can can still reach some pretty top speeds and a wahoo especially is going to have no trouble at all uh, biting through here if you if you run that mono from here all the way through the hooks there snip away it goes worse worse it hits up here it snips up here and then you lose the whole rig you lose the lure and everything so it's a sort of a risk so for the sake of what four inches of wire put it in here now this one's been sealed and whipped on there professionally but what i've done is i've painted those hooks i've actually painted the hooks white trying to keep a bit of salt rust off them and then i've obviously sharpened them so when you sharpen them you will get rust on them trust me if they're slightly rusty it doesn't matter once they go into seawater but by painting them like this it does sort of preserve it a bit better now this one in particular they've got it rigged like this with a piece of silicon rubber i'll roll it back there maybe you can see it that just holds the hooks in line in what's called opposed obviously you can twist it and you can have it 90 degrees there's absolutely no point in having the two together i feel like that because one hook when he bites down is going to stop the point going in on the other hook so you i think 90 degrees or 180 degrees what we call opposed hooks but when the marlin takes on this hook or this one whichever one he does if he's fighting during the fight he can he can slide that and snap it off or roll it all the way up some people put a little piece of tape just a single piece of tape there to hold them in position and it snaps off during the fight it prevents it being too rigid the rig and i'm going to come to that later on with the rigs that i make so that's one way of doing it and you also have here what's called a stainless steel thimble now these stainless steel thimbles you crimp on with crimps i've got double crimps there but it prevents the wear of the hook if you can imagine if this mono went through the hook eye it will be chafing and wear and eventually it will it will wear through so that stainless steel thimble prevents all the wear and tear on the hook and you can actually do it right at the other end as well in fact i recommend you do it because here i've double crimped you don't need to double crimp but you know if you're nervous like me you don't want to lose that fish of a lifetime i've double crimped the 400 there and i've got stainless steel thimble in there as well to allow for the wear when i put the snap swivel through here because any wear points will eventually if you're, you're pulling these along any wear point will go through there let me show you one of my other ones right the majority of marlin lures you're going to buy will probably have a hard head like a hard plastic it's actually two-part epoxy that mixes together and makes a hard head now if you've got a brand new one straight out of the packet no problem we'll just rig it but if you've got something that's been in the water for a while they get what we call smoky on the head and now you can shine that right up again by using metal cleaner a duster and some of this elbow grease watch what we do now you can see the head on this one it's sort of pretty smoky this is a murray brothers one it's brilliant marlin lures by the way those made in america so get your metal cleaner Give it a good shake up because it's all sort of abrasive particulates in there. Don't get it on the eye and you'll find just a good bit of rubbing takes all this sort of smokiness out of it, polishes out the acrylic. Sometimes marlin will hit this and because they've got such a rough bill, they rough it up and you get scuff marks where you've had bill strikes on them. But you can, trust me, you'll see it come up. A little bit of elbow grease hard rubbing you can also use a teacup car cleaner for car colors that cleans them up really well as well i'm going to do half of this just to show you do the face as well man i want to go fishing when i do this look at that does that look, look pristine shining and look at the dull side there absolutely dull that's the before and that's the after so a bit of cleaner you can polish all these up buff them up lovely i'll finish this one and then we're going to rig it okay here we go the tools of the trade a swaging tool and that's got a variety of crimping sizes in there we'll probably be using the two smaller ones a pair of pliers for pulling the wire cable through the two sleeves some cutters the marlin lure all nice and shiny and clean and perfect and then wire to go between the two to stop the wire who biting it off and then we come across 400 pound andy mono which is what i use as a variety of brands but i like andy purely in the premium 
very very hard and abrasion resistant really good hard line a couple of uh, 10-0 to 12-0 7-7-3-1 must add C demon hooks they are straight they're not offset they're straight and they don't have an intern point that's the ones I use some crimps which are 2.2 and that's a they're called mini double sleeves you can, you can see that they've got a little double end like a figure eight when you look at them so you put the cable and the leader in one side and back out and down the other your stainless steel thimbles which come either stainless or you can actually get luminous nylon ones which I don't sort of really like I like using these ones and we're ready to rock and roll and get this puppy rigged up for a marlin okay I've got my uh, monofilament leader here which I cut to about about 12 feet long that's what I like to use 12 feet 400 pound Andy very abrasion resistant I find it very very hard brittle it's good for rubbing across the uh, marlins build doesn't seem to go through very much so you got your snip there the first thing you do is when you cut it is to cut not this way that's square like that that's going to be hard to get through the through the thimble and um, through the sleeve cut it pop at an angle now depending on the manufacturer of the line you might need a 1.9 to go through uh, you know your mini double sleeve generally for 400 pound one a 2.2 sleeve does it so you're fine with that slope there if it does stick if you get onto a 1.9 with a different manufacturer just get a craft knife stanley knife box cutter just shave it off a little bit so you've got a taper on it you'll find it's much much easier to get through so basically with these mini double sleeves you're going to push it through this is to make the end which you're going to clip on with your snap swivel from the rod top effectively and you're going to be doing that now what i do find is straight out of the box these stainless steel thimbles are wider than the end of the sleeves there do you see what i mean and it just makes a sharp angle coming down i don't like it so just happen to have a pair of pliers with me because it is the totally awesome workshop we're in i'm going to close that down so they actually touch right then when i put it through like this please go through one do the turn go back through it leave a tag end over some people like to tuck it right in it always bothers me it does bother me that i haven't got quite enough crimp so i'd sooner put it through crimp it properly then snip the surplus off so then i'm going to drop my stainless steel thimble in there ease it down and nice and tight like that and you can see immediately that the angle of that slope there is almost the neck of the thimble is the same width as the sleeves now i'm going to shut that i'm going to compress that with this swaging tool but being a bit of a wimp at my age it's a bit tough just to do it like this it's sad but i'm going to do it on the bench and you'll see what a lovely neat job it makes now these swaging tools come with a, a variety of of gaps in here as i mentioned earlier and i'm just going to show you if you can see it there they're sprung loaded they're very powerful when they spring back so let's get this one in the neck you're going to shut the figure eight and compress the figure eight there now because it's mono i'm not going to use the very very end one i'm not going to use this end one here i'm going to come back one because i don't want to damage a mono i just just check everything is all nice and snug in there before you close it and here we go Cl oh, long I'm going to open this and you'll hear how hard the spring action is. So be careful. Listen. Yes, that could be your fingers. So watch that when it opens. Now you can see really, really neat. It's just compress that. The width of those jaws. You don't need to go up here and compress. You don't need to come down. If you go any further compressing and squeezing and crushing, you're going to damage the nylon. So that's all you do there. And then all I do is bend it back and pop off the tag end like that that's the end done now down to the other end we're going to be rig up the hooks for you and i'll show you the way that i do them okie dokie now what i'm going to be using for the wire is minimum this one is duratest seven strand which is a very good one in coffee color and that's 182 kilos so that's pretty strong um, i would suggest 400 pound i'm actually going to be using bigger stainless which is at least 600 it might be 800 pound breaking strain this one now this is for if you want to call it the biting length in between the two hooks here so we're going to mount these hooks like that opposed and i'm going to 
put the first one on and then I want some wire in between so that if any wahoo hits here, it's not going to cut it all off. Now, one little tip I can give you is to get a piece of sellotape because this has a really, really annoying habit of opening up and splaying out, making it difficult. So just take a little bit of sellotape, tear it off, just roll it around the cable wire. Supplies to pretty well any cable wire and it gets worse if you have blunt cutters. So let's just see if this one's going to work properly. Pair of cutters. Pop. Was that sweet or what? I didn't think that would happen the first time. And then you just gently, the cable's going this way, unroll it the direction of the cable, the sellotape comes off, and you're ready to put your crimp on. Take the end of your crimp, just roll it. I always try and roll it in the direction that the cable has been laid in. So now you can either go through a single or you can go through what we call a Flemish eye, which is going through that eye twice. That's how I do it, back through the loop. Pull that knot down. Now you should go through that again, but I'm not going to. I'm just gonna do it that once and I'm gonna put the crimp on there. Now for cable like this, 400 pound, you can get away with a 1.9 mil sleeve. I'm still gonna do this with 2.2. Pull that down tight, pull that down tight and you should be able to see it's, it's nice and snug in there on the eye of the hook. And then I'm going to get my, my, my swaging tool. I'm going to use the end crimp. Just line it up in the middle. Keep it all nice and snug and lean on it. Bang. Let's close that one up. Snip off the tag end. There. And I'm going to be taping over all this so it doesn't matter. Now roll that around. There's the marlin lure. That's where this is going to go up inside the, the head of the marlin lure there. You're going to allow not just the eye of the hook, but a crimp there as well. So about there to about there. So I want the bend to be around about here in the wire. So you can actually put a little bend in the wire there. Snip off your surplus initially. Put your other crimp on like this and just line your hook up in that bend there's the crimp I've got the little bend I've already made there roll it around here so that that wire is laying along the shank and on we go reversing the hook so it's facing up I'm going to go through there twice as per normal Pull it tight just before I, I cinch it down, relax it, put it through, Ooh, put it tight, roll it through the other sleeve, give it a good hard pull there, that pops it down tight, get a pair of pliers on the other bit, snug it down, close it up with the tool. And that is never going to move. Trust me, if you've done it right to use the right size diameter sleeves, that one is now ready. You can just twist these around like this until you get them totally opposed. But here is my secret weapon. Now, in order to retain these hooks in that 180 degree opposed configuration, you need to put some tape, some electrical stretch tape, or you can use shrink tube over there and warm it with a lighter and that melts it and shrinks that in position holding the steel cable to the shank of the hook there. Or you can use a piece of valve rubber and have it just tagged in here so it moves. What I don't like is the fact that this can be still swinging around from the back here. Now I don't want a solid piece of wire coming through. I've used coat hanger wire, it's stiff, and that can actually work as a lever against you. If this is the Marlin's jaws, and he's got that, as you take the leader to pull the fish up to release it, tag it, whatever you're gonna do, I've lost two like that, where it's definitely rolled around the bill and popped out because this acts like a lever. So what I'm gonna do, and this is what, not what I'm gonna do, is what I've always done since I've, I've been fishing, is I'm just gonna start with some electrical, I call it electrical stretch tape, it's just electrical marking, uh, coding tape for wire. 
but it's nice and stretchy. Start it off there, and I go. I'm, what I'm basically doing is binding that cable, the steel cable, to the shank. Now I get to about halfway, just just under halfway down, and then the secret weapon: a piece of sprung, not rigid, sprung. It's called 18 SWG spring wire, and I get it from model shops, and it's used for the undercarriage on the wheels on model aircraft. So it's, it springs, and the reason for that is it can actually spring back in position after a marling comes up to take the lure. And I'll show you when I just take this up. I'm just going to tape it up. I take a lot more trouble than this normally. Now, what you've got to watch is you don't snap this tape off and spike your hand on the point of the hook, because I've already had these pre-sharpened. When I get there, I come behind the bend of the hook, and then I start rolling that piece of single wire, single hard wire, spring wire, along that cable like this, as best I can do it while I'm trying to film at the same time, and line it up, that's the sort of critical part, is getting it to go over the eye of the hook. That's it, let me get over, I'm gonna show you that, that's it. Once you roll it over that eye, ah, now I can feel the shaft of the wire is over there. Round we go. I normally go over it twice, but you know. And this also keeps the salt water off the cadmium plating on the hooks. I don't like using the stainless hooks. I really don't like using them as a maker I used to use. I won't tell you what it was. I've seen so many marlin loss where it snaps. I think the stainless is very, very brittle. Now, you can see there that that, if I do this with it, springs. Right, now my theory is, here's a marlin lure going along, going this way, the marlin comes up behind it, he hits it with his bill, which they do to stun their prey. He hits it, okay, now if you had a stiff rig, it bends over and stays bent over. So the next time he comes up to take the marlin lure, he's only got one hooks in position behind the lure in the skirt to bite on. You're at 50% disadvantage. This way, he hits this, immediately it springs straight back into position, straight back into position. And more important, when he does take it, and invariably you get a back hook hook up with these, when he does take it and you lead the fish up for release or keep it or whatever you want to do, when you're pulling up on the leader, this, say that's rigid and it's around the marlin's bill, look, it bends, it bends, it gives. So trust me, I've caught not all of my marlin, but I've had over 250 marlin, mostly blues, on lures on this rig. Trust me, for me, it works, that's all I can say. I call it the spring rig system. And all we've got to do now we've made it up is put it into the marlin lure. Let's go. Okay, ladies, don't say I didn't warn you, but I decided to put another roll of tape around here. And the tape snapped. And I said just now about the hooks going in, and that's what it did. Bang, straight in there. So when you're winding this tape round, just be very, very careful, because I'm doing this not on boxed hooks, I'm doing it on hooks I previously sharpened to a hypodermic tip. So let's get this cleaned up and I'll get this lure rigged up for you. Well, here we go. Take the other end of your leader. You've obviously going to cut a little chamfer on that like this. It's slipped off. Thread your marlin lure onto there. Bring it out the other side of the skirt. Like that. Then... You're going to slide on your crimp. I'm just going to use the one crimp this time. Let's get another mini double uh, mini uh, double sleeve. If we've got a couple spare there in case I mess up. And I'm going to do the same thing. I want it matching there. So I'm going to actually close that down like this. Just, a, just, just enough. And then you can do it on the hook if you want. Squeeze it around the hook eye. You'll see it go in. Oh, there's another tip. I must give you this tip. Because of the shape of this, you might actually need just to flatten that flange a touch there to get that to rest in the eye of the hook properly. That's it, perfect. And then you close it. My fault. There we go. That's done. So I've got the Marley lure on here. It's come through the back. I'm going to go through the back of this. You need to, to work it away from the wire, obviously. Roll it around. And leave that little tag end up there if you can. Slide the mini double sleeve back down over it. Now you can see because I've still leak in there. Uh, I've I've crushed that down. It's it's perfectly lined up. And 
into the jaws we go. I should be chumming with all this blood going to work in a workshop. It happens. Close it down. Ooh, I've got the strength now. Bang. Watch those handles. Snip it off. And there you have the marlin lure. So there we have, folks. One marlin lure ready to use. Now look, you can... You can hardly see those horrible hooks that just spike me in there. Can you? you cannot see them. Now, if that's being trolled along at 10 knots, my God. Look, there's the point of the hook there. And it's stopped by this crimp right in the back of the head of the lure. Okay, like that. And there's another tip. Put 50% of the lure skirt one side of that rig and 50% the other. And when you put them in the water, don't just toss them in the water. Swing them out, lay them, so you've got 50% either side. Make sure none of these skirt fronds, as it were, are um, tangled up. And you can see the back hook's just hidden in there as well. And should the marlin take it, you've got that, that spring rig action there. Coil them up. No problem at all. You can coil them up and put a piece of rubber band around them. Or you can even get, now, you can get these special loops, you know, that you can coil them on. You just you push, push push it through there. If I push it through the right side, it'd be handy. Push your eyelet, the stainless steel eyelet, through there. Just coil it all up, and that keeps all those leader cords. Because if you have four, five, or six lures in your tackle bag, trust me, it comes out as a mess. And then all you do is get a piece of tape like this, and or you can use a rubber band as well, and just cinch it down. He says, trying to find the end. There we go. I'll tell you what, you could do one of these totally awesome things. I'm trying to find the end of a piece of sellotape. Come on, baby. And it, I'm determined to do this. I'm not giving up, you know. Because it's so easy once you get the end. You just go like that and you go, bang, job done. And of course, they've got these little eyelets. You can hang them up in your tackle room as well. Just pick the lure as and when you want it. One mile, mile in lure, fully rigged. You know the saying, all you got to do is add water. But let me show you one or two of the others. Okay, here we go, some of the better ones. This is a seven strand Kona clone. They are very, very good for striped marlin and small blue marlin. They have that tapered head and they have that slight scoop face there. And there's one that's rigged up that might give you a better idea. They've got that little scoop face. They catch a little bit of air, but they dive under the water a lot. Anything with a large head or a large resistant face on it is going to catch air. You're going to have a lot of bubbles behind it. It'll work well. These are very, very good. And if you rig this all on wire, totally wire throughout, uh, make it sink a little bit deeper, you've got a good chance of wahoo. Selfish, wahoo, tuna, striped marlin. That's that one. You can also get ones with rotating heads now, like turbo heads. They spin as they go around, and that sets up a vibration under the water. And of course, You've got this flector light prism in there, red one side, red the other. They must think when that's whistling round, it looks something like a set of traffic lights, I guess. At the front there, they've got a nice piece of nylon, heavy duty, it's not valve, I read it's actually nylon, to stop your leader wearing. Because sometimes if the leader came out of here, i.e. like that, it can wear. So what you do is, you're not gonna see that, slide the leader back out and just check where that eye was that it's not warm because if that's churning around like this in the water for day upon day, hour upon hour, it's going to wear there. So this one, the spinning head one with that tube, is a really good idea. You've got the high speed doorknobs that we told you about in the Molecraft high speeds with that waist. A high speed have always got this narrow waist and you pull these up to 20 knots. So they're very, very good. I've got that one for, for Wahoo, as you can see, 600 pound cable straight through. There's another clone seven strand with a silver head some people say eyes some people not personally they probably don't see the eye because they're going to be coming from behind it but it catches anglers i think doesn't it you know if maybe a fish swinging in from the side coming in off the off the side through the wake is going to see that eye and it's going to turn him on but i tend to think by the time they see it they're behind it if they're behind it they don't see the eye that's my theory now two of the big chunks two of the big boys which i've had a lot of blue marlin on now they might look big, trust me they are big. You can see why those have got big 12 O's. Again on the spring rig, hooks need up, a bit of a clean. Big chunks of seven strand um, lures these ones. They are very, very good. 
straight taper on the head, dead flat there, offset centre. So it's going to it's going to pull deep, punch air, leave a big stream of bubbles, a nice big eye, and being slightly offset there with a the pulling point, it's going to rotate as it goes. It's going to cover a bit of ground, but not huge. It's not going to cover a huge bit of ground. The big thing with marlin lures is you don't want them moving about too much. It attracts a fish. It makes them strike, but just as they go to grab it, it moves away, and they miss they miss the lure. Right. There's only two marlin lures for me, really. If you had to say you want to go blue marlin fishing, Graham, which one is it? I'm sorry. It's the Murray Brothers LNG one. I don't even know if they still make them. These things are just unbelievable. They actually have in the back of them two slots. I don't know if you can see them there. You probably won't be able to see them. There, that you can actually put Sialoom light sticks inside. You used to crack them, the chemical light sticks, pop them in there, pinch them with a, a toothpick, and they would actually light up the eyes in there. And I've used these and had strikes at night from broadbill swordfish, so then I, I know they work. And to be honest, I've used those lights during the daytime and done really well. Of all the colours, if you, I chose any marlin lure, this head size with that angle, slightly bulbous, is absolutely spot on. It's spot on for big marlin, that one, they love it. But it needs a clean up, as you say, so that one I can shine right up like brand new, just using, as you can see the difference between the two. That's a smoky one, and look at the one I polished up absolutely gleaming and shining now the steeper the steeper that angle on that face the more travel you're going to get on the marlin lure the more it's going to travel around but these ones i like to call them like a pusher lure because they absolutely send a big plume of bubbles like a ridge under the water it's like they're almost running underneath the skin of the of the water when they go along so that would be my number second right number two favorite without question anywhere in the world and i caught billfish in the indian the atlantic pacific oceans lng number one pink silver that's the kitty that is the one that does the damage i had more strikes on that fish from riggers any other lure i've got i've got so many lures it doesn't bear thinking about but if you want to go blue marlin fishing if you want to go striped marlin fishing get yourself some lures get them rigged up right get those hooks sharp and you should be in with some luck there guys so hope that's of some help to you I'll talk to you again about other, other lures, probably tuna at another stage. Just keep watching Totally Awesome Fishing, How To's.